Now I know there's going to be more than a few people in the comments section of this video saying who asked for this movie. And I can answer that question right now. Absolutely no one. That being said, I didn't personally ask for 5,000 superhero movies over the past several years, but we got those anyway, didn't we? At least with Gladiator 2, I know that there might be some level of artistic integrity associated with it, so I'm willing to give it a chance. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Let's go, baby! Gladiator 2 trailer in full effect! How do you make a sequel to a movie where everyone died? I mean, are they fighting in the afterlife? Oh, it's the little kid all grown up. That makes sense. Wait a second, Denzel is in this? Okay, all right. The Roman Empire ain't got shit on me! Wait, who's the villain of this story, the Joker? Let me find out this is a backdoor prequel to a DC project. I might lose my mind. I think I speak for everyone when I say Pedro Pascal is not in enough things. Rage might be his gift, but optimism is mine. Oh shit, is that a rhino? Peak cinema. He wants the heads of the entire Roman army? That's a lot of head. Rome will fall in November and Denzel will be the one to knock it down. Alright, so for those that don't know, yes, Ridley Scott is making a sequel to his 2000 masterpiece, and now we have an official trailer for the project, and I do have some thoughts. First, I just want to start off by saying that I know that there are people who have an issue with this movie existing at all. It does feel a bit forced and a bit unnecessary if we are being honest with ourselves. Then why the f didn't you say so? And if you couple that with the fact that a lot of people have taken issue with Ridley Scott's more recent projects. Needless to say, there doesn't seem to be a ton of optimism around this movie right now. I personally look at Ridley Scott much differently than other people do. Does he take some unnecessary chances? Does he take some liberties from time to time? Absolutely. But I happen to be of the opinion that the guy made Alien and the original Gladiator, so at this point he can do whatever the f he wants. Are you going to get some clunkers along the way? Absolutely. But I like the fact that Ridley Scott himself is very unapologetic about the films that he makes. The guy makes the movies that he wants to make in the way that he wants to make them. And he really doesn't give a sh what other people have to say about them. I appreciate that level of authenticity in this day and age where everyone is afraid of their own shadow. Amen. I prefer my filmmakers to take some chances, even if those chances don't always work out. Remember when everyone got all upset about his Napoleon biopic, and he basically told everyone, including the entire country of France, to go f*** themselves? Honestly, that's kind of refreshing to me. That being said, Ridley is clearly taking some liberties with Gladiator 2 as well and absolutely no one should be surprised by that. Now, like the first film, this is a work of fiction. It is very loosely based on real events, meaning I'm not personally going into it expecting something that is going to be 100% historically accurate. There are other movies that exist if that's what you are looking for. And I'll tell you right now, before I even see it, a Ridley Scott Gladiator sequel is not the place you're going to get that. Not up in here! NOT UP IN HERE! Oh. There's been a little bit of fake outrage around this movie based around the character that Denzel Washington plays. Where we got such eloquent reactions on social media such as, Really? A black king in ancient Rome? Or, Why is there black people in ancient Rome? Or, Hi black Roman? This is too far, not even history itself could save how inaccurate this is. Now I understand that this is a sensitive subject when it comes to modern film discussion, because a lot of people have allowed themselves to be programmed by the typical Hollywood pandering. But is this particular casting really something that you want to lose sleep over? A piece of historical fiction that doesn't exactly line up with the history books. Not to mention, Denzel Washington is pretty much one of, if not the greatest actors of all time. If we are upset about seeing what will probably be another great Denzel performance, then I think we need to reevaluate our priorities. All right, 
I'm putting cases on all you bitches. The guy is a living legend. He is a former collaborator with Ridley Scott. And by all indications, he will most likely steal this movie. So what exactly is everyone so upset about? There are times to call out Hollywood for their phony, disingenuous bullshit but this is not one of them. As for the trailer itself, overall, I pretty much liked what I saw. It is actually pretty surreal to see a character like the one that Denzel plays, or what will ultimately be an over-the-top performance from Joseph Quinn in a Gladiator movie. It's like Ridley Scott is slapping you across the face with the idea that this is pure theater. It's escapism. And if you are going into it looking for anything else, you will probably be disappointed. It is weird that some of the characters do feel a bit out of place given the time period. But for the reasons that I just mentioned, I think that was a very intentional decision. That makes sense. The story is about little Lucius from Gladiator 1, now all grown up and trying to channel his inner Maximus. Now Maximus is not in this film for obvious reasons, but I venture to say that his presence will still loom over this film, but it does look like Gladiator 2 will follow a lot of the same beats as the original film. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Like I said with my Axel F review over the weekend, it's better to play it safe than to stray too far and have everyone asking what the f*** you're doing. I also hope, however, that there are enough new ideas contained within this story to justify this film's existence. I mean, we do need a little bit of extra justification when we have people walking around and already asking the question, why is this movie being made? As far as the fighting goes, the action, the spectacle of it, it all pretty much looks par for the course for a movie like this. I'm gonna go pick a fight. I think the key to this film will definitely be the Denzel-Paul Mescal character relationship. That will be the driving force and that will determine to the audience whether or not Lucius is a character worth being invested in. Denzel is definitely giving off those little finger vibes if there are any fans of Game of Thrones out there. So it will be interesting to see how much of this relationship is genuine and how much of it is manipulation. As he says in the trailer, this world is all about power, and that means accumulating more power at all costs. Pedro Pascal is in this movie, and let's face it, Pedro Pascal is in a lot of movies. He will be playing what looks to be an evil military general. I'm just going to say that due to his overusage in modern media, it's not going to be hard for them to get me to hate his character in this film. If he dies, he dies. Bottom line, I don't really see this as a situation where this film could either ruin or enhance the legacy of the original film. Gladiator 2, and I give them a lot of credit for using that name and not calling it Gladiator Legacy or some dumb shit like that. We need to normalize putting numbers in the title again. I'm over the lame subtitle thing. This movie just feels like it's going to give us another glimpse into this world and I'm not necessarily against that. It looks like there's enough new interesting characters and a decent enough new story under the guidance of an iconic director that I'm willing to give this movie a chance. On a list of films that I thought would never have a sequel, Gladiator would probably been at the top of that list. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some interesting stories to be told in this world. So I guess what I'm saying is maybe we should all lighten up. This could be another Fast and Furious sequel, something that we really don't need more of. Y'all be cool. Got on.